And for us, it's really changing exhibitions and programs that drive what we do. And right now, I have up as little of our permanent collection as I've ever had. And that, in some ways, is a problem, and in some ways, is a virtue, depending on who you are. <laughs> Are there artists out there right now that you think are exploring what is Southern in very interesting, unique ways? I would probably say no. What is the question? <laughs> the question is, are there artists out there exploring what is Southern in very interesting and unique ways? And I think artists explore, the, the, you know, the good artists that we all like and those of you that are artists, you explore what's in your heart, what's in your mind, what's in your history, what's in your response to the world that you live in, and somehow how to create objects that mean something to you from that. I receive an amazing amount of horrible solicitations that have to do with cliches, that have to do with what people think is Southern and what would be in the museum in terms of a Southern museum. And one of the nicest compliments that I can get as a curator is when people walk through the museum and say, you know, it's not what I expected. Because, you know, they expect certain cliches, certain boundaries, and at times the museum, like right now, we're showing a couple of things opening Saturday that are traditional. I'm showing paintings of the Texas landscape painter Julian Onderdock from the 20s and the 30s, and Walker Evans, two trips to Louisiana in 1935 and 1936 when he photographed. Southern artist? I didn't even know he came here. Well, subject matter. Subject, subject matter. That's wow. number three. I would love to see All the him. photographs are Louisiana. We all love Walker Evans, but he ain't from the South. No, I didn't say he had to be. He looked at the South. He had the South as subject matter. Hey, he looked at New Orleans, yeah, years. but what about Ben Sean? I yeah, mean, well, I have Ben so, Sean in our on, collection, brother. too. We can get a lot of people and put them in that boat, but... Yeah. But how do you make those selection and choices? I'm, all, I'm not showing Walker Evans photographs of New York. I'm showing Walker Evans photographs of Louisiana, the South, as subject, rather than the artist as Southern. You are right. You the still. outside. You, know, you got the inside, you got the outside, you got a dialogue, and you have kind of clear lines. I mean, one of the great things for me, I receive horrible solicitations. I look at the resume and I say, you're not a southerner, your work is not about the south, no thank you. So I can just mark them off the list without a, without a scrap. Whereas, you know, with the, with the Walker Evans thing, a lot of the work that many of us admire about Walker Evans that I would love to show have nothing to do with our mission. We don't show them. What do we show? We show his two trips to Louisiana, which influenced a great deal of what he did later in his life. So, when are you going to show Rodko? Because um, he had a tremendous influence here. I'd love to show Rothko at some point. Rothko was visiting artists at Tulane, major influence on Ida Colmeyer and many others. A whole bunch and, of folks. Um, I would like to get So that. I'm just saying, you know, since you're going southern. No, no I, I Go have southern, a, brother. Well, born here, significant work with influence like a Rothko. And you would need to show Rothko in the context of the people he influenced, too, to help demonstrate that for people of saying, what does Rothko have to do with the South? So back to Miranda's question about a Southern institution, context becomes important. Rather than just disembodied objects on a wall, you talk about place, the fact that the works were made by a person, the person has a history, and, um, you know, you look at Benny Andrews. We have a dedicated gallery to Benny Andrews, born in Georgia had to leave the South because of segregation to get an education in art. Chicago Art Institute spends all of his career in New York City, but what he does is spend his career looking back on his youth in the South. So again, he's outside looking back at when he was an insider. And the way I would show Rothko would be very different than the way that Miranda would show Rothko at Nome. So this shifting context in the frame of the museum becomes an important part of the commentary. Mm -hmm. You talk a lot about museums in terms of access and audience. And I'm just wondering how does um, Yogden um, come to terms with a new 
definition of access. What kinds of programs do you offer that draw in people that don't make you into this train station style museum or Disney style experience, but still are meaningful and add to what you're curating? Well, we, we have a complex problem that we're poor. Um, we do not have a strong line of budget from the city or the state, so we're constantly, like many young institutions, trying to find ways to support ourselves. But the expansion of programming is something that's been important in the last couple of years especially. Um, we started out with an education program working with the Orleans Parish Schools called Artists of Sense of Place, where we took artists that live in the neighborhood of the school and would place them in the school for a month. Many of these schools didn't have um, an artist in the school. So educational outreach is one of those ways. We um, have the support of the Hellas Foundation to make Thursdays free and open to anyone um, with a Louisiana driver's license. We've started an outreach to senior citizens for art making activities and tours on Monday. We do the music program Ogden After Hours which brings a different group of people that would never look at art that come from music into the museum. The galleries are open. We've started a series of southern storytellers, uh, writers that come and read from their work. Um, we have events related to food, um, panel discussions related to history because one of our challenges is we do not have a lot of household names in our institution. Um, I could list 25 names outside of Louisiana and most of you would have never heard of any of them that are important people to what we do. So what we have to do is to take those things that people know about the South, the music, food, literature, the disparity of our history, and kind of create that as a context. And a lot of the programming that we're doing is issue-driven or contextual-driven that way. So, you know, it's, it's not just a building and they will come idea, but rather, in, in fact, the first education program we did, we had an event with young people's work in the museum, invited the school, and absolutely no one came and we were completely baffled and we went the next week to the school and started talking to people and we were realizing that we were working with a constituency with no transportation so if you were going to make a project like this and you wanted people to come and see it within the walls of the museum you had to provide transportation, communication and make them aware that the total package of making the work being transported in and back home in a comfortable way was very much a part of the package. So, you know, New Orleans is a, a unique, complex, changing place, and one of the tensions we have is being a local institution versus being an, a regional institution. Um, we just finished a project um, looking at the art of Tennessee. Um, now we're kind of looking at some more historical things. So it's kind of a matrix of looking locally, looking at the region, looking at the contemporary, and looking at the traditional at the same time. 